Hello. To recap last episode, a lot happened yesterday. We played at Chasers, so that's nothing new. We won money. That is a foreign concept. And we also talked yeah. to a uh, waitress. She gave me a tap water. I tipped her a dollar. We're basically engaged. Those are all of the updates you missed from last vlog. Today, we are going to... I'm at a loss for words. That seagull just rained white fire right all over that Silverado. Wow. Dude, I feel like I'm at war. The pure fear in my eyes as that seagull just like nearly rained hellfire straight over my head. As I was saying, we're going to try to recreate the win from yesterday. Do more of that today. That's really all I gotta say. Let's play some cards. head inside and buy into the game for $1,000, which is the max. We walk over to the end of the table and get situated. We've lost 11 out of our last 12, so let's try to put an end to the dry streak. We need to start winning. All right, buckle up, Buttercup. I am about to give you the hand review of a century. We start off with pocket jacks and the low jack. I raise up to $30 and everyone folds. Let's go! We take down the blinds! Next we have 6-5 of diamonds in the big blind. The cutoff and button both limp, then the small blind raises it up to $20. We have two pretty suited cards, and in our society, beauty gets rewarded, so I stick money in the middle. The cutoff and button come along as well. Going four ways to a flop, which comes ace, three, two, two clubs. Also a diamond. We have those. Back to our opportunities foreshadowing. I was lame. I'm sorry. Everything you do conveys information. That was a tell, right? Okay, whatever. Who cares? The small blind and I check. The cutoff bet's $20. Action folds to me. For that price, I'm willing to peel one card and see what develops. The turn is an interesting one. It's the king of diamonds. We now pick up additional outs with a backdoor flush draw. Still have a gut shot to the super ultra nutter butters. I check... This time, the cutoff bets $25. I, in real time, I was thinking, bro, what are you doing? This is so weak. I, I sensed weakness. I was like, bro, what are you doing? This is not a thing. $25 into 100 something? No shot. This can't be strong. I check raise to $125. To my surprise, the cutoff quickly makes the call. Now I'm thinking, oh god, poker gods, what did I get myself into? Please bail me out. I throw a prayer up to the rafters for the one time, and the deities upstairs say, absolutely no problem, Corey, we got you. The river is the four of diamonds. We river a backdoor flush. Even better, the cutoff has around 275 behind, a perfect size to jam. I press the big red button and the cutoff goes into the tank. He thinks for around 30 seconds before shrugging and throwing in a chip. We show, and we are so, so good. Poker is a really easy game when you river the nuts, so I think my strategy moving forward is to just do that more often. As for poker, in this next hand, we have ace-10 of diamonds in late position. There's a limper to me. I raised it up to $40. Then the straddler three bets to 150. Without getting too nerdy, button versus blind, this is just a straightforward call. So that's what I do. We go heads up to a flop, which comes ace, jack, six, two clubs, and a diamond. I think you know where this is going. Straddler C bets $125. I have no other option than to call. The turn is where all hell breaks loose. It's the two of diamonds. There are now two flush draws on board, and the straddler jams all in for $782. Oh, God. We go well into the tank. I have an ace. There's an ace on the board, meaning there's only two left in the deck. And while he could have a hand like ace-king or a set of jacks, I got the vibe that this was a hand like king-queen of clubs or king-ten of clubs. It felt a lot more like a draw than a made hand. After thinking for about a minute, counting out my chips, I was like, listen, 
I have an ace. Worst comes to worst, I have a backdoor flush draw. I'm not drawing dead. We can just suck out on the river. I stick my money in the middle, and we go off to a river, which comes the king of diamonds. Well, if we weren't good on the turn, then we're certainly good now. Even more surprising, the straddler flips over 9-8 of diamonds. He did it super quickly and confidently, not to burst his bubble, but buddy, we have the nuts. We flip over our hand and take down a massive pot. Back-to-back, -back, backdoor flushes. Wow. I'd say we're running pretty damn hot to start the session. Here we have ace five of hearts on the button. Cutoff limps. I raise it up to $40, and the cutoff makes the call. Flop comes 972 rainbow. Pretty ugly for our hand, but we could have a lot of strong hands on this board, like sets of nines, sevens, or 10 9, jack 9, a lot of hands. I see about $30, and the cutoff makes the call. Turn comes a queen of hearts. Cutoff checks once more with around $700 behind. This card is one that's going to be better for my range as the Razor. Plus, another bet here is going to put a lot of hands like 10-9, 8-9, uh, pocket 6s, pocket 5s, any lower pair in a really tough position. I amp up the pressure and throw out $175. The cutoff doesn't think too long before making the fold. Here's an obligatory stack update. I am currently attempting to build the biggest castle known to mankind. It's a work in progress, but we have the foundation complete, and that is good enough for me. Next, we have queen 10 of spades in the big blind. Cutoff limps, button raises to $35. Small blind calls, I call, and the cutoff comes along as well. We go God knows how many ways to a flop, which comes queen 9-8. Two diamonds. We make top pair, but we don't have a great kicker, and this is a quite the connected board. Plus, in this position, I'm always going to check it over to the original razor. That's what I do, and action ends up checking around. Still going 76 ways to a turn card, which, dude, we are sun running today. It's the jack of hearts. We're playing pretty deep, over a thousand effective, and... Since there are so many people in this pot, I'm thinking if I check, then someone else might bet, then I have a perfect opportunity to raise, and checking twice with a straight, like who does that, it doesn't make much sense, maybe I get called lighter, okay, who cares. I check, praying to God that someone puts in a bet, and unfortunately, action checks all the way to the preflop raiser, and I'm thinking, great, he's going to check this, but no. The button bets $100. Then the small blind makes the call. My eyes light up like dollar signs because I'm counting all of the cash that's going to be in my pocket shortly after this hand. Perfect opportunity. I check raise to $350. The button goes into the tank and thinks for a while. This is the same player that jammed with 8-9 suited in the previous hand. I think he wants to get revenge. Revenge will not be coming now, however, as the button and small blind fold. <laughs> Sounds like we almost got called, which would have been fantastic. Anyways, moving on. Running like Jesus Christ disciple is never not a fun time. I don't think we've missed a flop today. Next spot, we pick up 10, 9 of diamonds in the straddle. There are three limps to me, and honestly, I think that raising this hand is probably best, but here I decide to check my option. Flop comes ace, jack, six with two diamonds. Why would we not flop another flush draw? Small blind bets $20. I call, and so do the cutoff and button. The turn is the king of hearts, giving us additional outs. Now we have a gut shot to a straight. The small blind doesn't seem to care. That's actually my buddy, and he's kind of an idiot. So my idiot friend bets $60, which is really annoying for me because it's like, 
I have a hand that I want to see a river with, but unfortunately, I have two players behind me left to act. If I just call, it caps my hand and I look really, really weak, which gives a player behind me the perfect opportunity to raise and get me off of my draw. Silly old me, I put in the call, just crossing my fingers, hoping that they will play friendly poker. No, that's not going to happen. The cutoff smells blood like a shark in the water and raises to 180. Everyone and myself get the hell out of Dodge. I probably should have peeled one for this price, but he didn't have enough money. I don't know. I definitely should have called. I folded like a explicit word. Next hand. Here we have king, queen, offsuit on the button. The cutoff limps. The cutoff does a lot of limping. Why? Just raise. Be a man. I raise it up to $40, and the cutoff makes the call. Flop comes king, jack, 10, rainbow. That's a quite the enticing... Dude, I have not missed today. I'm like Steph Curry from the three. Genuinely on fire. Cutoff checks... I see bet $40 because this board is quite connected. We could get called by a lot of hands, like Queen Jack, Queen 10, uh, Jack 9. A lot of hands that we absolutely dominate. Cutoff doesn't think too long before making the call. Turn card is like rice gum in 2022. It's irrelevant. Cutoff checks it once more. I want to pick a sizing that doesn't scare him away but allows me to get all the money in on the river with uh, easy jam. I bet $115. Then the cutoff shocks me. He checked jams for $378. That eliminates my concern of getting all the money in on later streets. I could not call quicker. River comes another brick, and the cutoff shows queen nine of hearts for a flopped straight? What? I was honestly never expecting to lose this hand. I thought that there's a big possibility the cutoff has like Queen Jack, Queen 10 for another open ender like me, but no, absolutely not. I guess we can't run pure all the time. We finally lose a pot and cough up a good chunk of change. Nice hand, sir. Here we have Ace-8 of clubs in the cutoff. The hijack does what the hijack does. He limps. Who could have seen that coming? Not me. Never. I do what I always do and raise it up to $40 like a fish. The small blind and hijack make the call. Flop comes queen 5-2 with two hearts and a club. The small blind donk leads for $30. I've seen a donk lead several times and it's really never that strong. From what I've seen, it's usually draws or middling to weak pairs. In this case, I put them on like pocket sevens, pocket eights that are betting for protection, don't really know where they're at, or just the obvious flush draw. He's setting his own price. We don't have much here, but I also don't think the small blind has much. I plan to steal it away from him on later streets. I make the call. We go heads up to a turn card which comes the six of diamonds. Now the small blind bets $50. It was at this point where I said, all right, pal, stop playing around. Games are over. I raise it up to $200. Then the small blind snap raises to 400. Min clicks it like an absolute fucking boss. I was like, dude, what is going on? Does he have three, four? Why, why? What is this line? Donk lead on the flop. Bet small on the turn. I raise. He snap raises. I couldn't even get my chips in the pot fast enough. And he's like, 400. No problem. I shake my head and fold my cards. I have no idea what's going on. That hand. What? What is this? What is this hand? I, I actually got tilted from this hand. I, I had to walk outside and take a break. Okay, I don't have these hands on film because the floor came over to me and said, hey, buddy, Corey, are you recording? And 
most of you don't might not know, but I have a second phone that I use. It's propped up and I use my sweatshirt to cover it because I'm not allowed to record. So I have my phone on the table covered by the sweatshirt and the floor member came over to me. He's like, you're not recording, are you? And I looked at him like, Al, hey, big guy, come on. You know I would never do such a thing, right? And while I'm doing that, I take my hand off my sweatshirt and like show him the camera. I'm like, dude, I would, I have no idea where you got that idea from. I would never, ever record at this facility. I don't know why you got that idea. Long story short, he told me to stop filming. I put my phone in my pocket and was like, good day, sir. So the next two hands I have to tell you about face to face, you have to suffer through. Let's get over it. Contact the floor and tell them all of your issues or don't, maybe just watch. The first hand of note, we have ace eight of clubs, which did us quite dirty in the last hand. We pick it up again. After dinner break though, so we're cool, calm and collected, ready to get on with our lives. We are in the hijack. Cody's gonna put that right here, it's gonna look sweet. I raised it up to $30 and only the straddler defends. Flop comes queen eight, seven, rainbow. Straddler checks it to me and with middle pair, we could certainly check here. There are hands like 10, nine that we can get value from. Plus there's that pesky club. In my head, I'm thinking, if I happen to backdoor another flush here, I want this pot to be bloated and bigger. Could go with a check. We decide to bet $20, and the straddler makes the call. Turn card comes a really juicy one. It's the two of clubs. Straddler checks it once again. Now, I'm like, dude, we can still get value from drawing hands like 9-10 or 6-5. And we're still ahead of hands like nine, eight, plus we have the nut flush draw. I'm putting in another bet here. I size up to $80 and the straddler doesn't think too long before making the call. As you can tell by my expression, the river is quite a nice one. It's the 10 of clubs, chef's kiss, voila, third back door, nut flush, welcome. It's an easy, easy game. I told you at the beginning of this video, it's going to be implemented into my strategy more often. That's really all I'm trying to do is just make the nuts and get paid, right? Straddler checks it a third time. Since I have a really strong hand, I'm going to bet pretty large. Makes sense. I would do that with all of my bluffs. What bluffs do I have here? God knows what. Actually, yeah, God does know. It's My bluffs would be like hands like 10-9 or 5-6, maybe containing a club. Long story short, I overbet 1.3 times the size of the pot. I count out $350 and push it towards the middle. Before I even get the chips across the line, the straddler flicks in a chip and snap calls. We show, we are good. My God, this session is just mwah, mwah, mwah. I'm pocketing dollars left and right. This is the best session I've played in a long, long, long time really has nothing to do with my play. I'm just, get. I'm a luck box. I don't know what to tell you. Here we go. Last hand of the night. Pocket tens in the small blind. The button limps. And since we're in the worst position imaginable, I'm going to raise it up. I would do $40 in position plus an additional 10 since I'm, we're in the small blind, raise bigger. I raise it up to $50 and only the big blind makes the call. Button wants no smoke. He knows better. Flop is pretty damn good. Comes 873 rainbow. I see bet $40. Big blind makes the call. One second. Someone's knocking on my door. We're going to go get dinner in like three minutes. I got to tell you about this hand and skedaddle. I see bet $40. He makes the call. Turn card comes the queen of diamonds. Introducing a backdoor flush draw and bringing an over card to our pair. Obviously not that great. This time I slow down and check. Big blind says, no, 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 no. We don't do that checking stuff around here, partner. He throws out $125. This player has been known to do some spicy things with uh, like a lot of hands. I don't necessarily believe that we're beat just yet. So I make the call. The river, the river, baby. It's the 10 of clubs. Yeah, we did it again. I check. 
playing in flow. The big blind does not slow down. He bets $200 with $680 left behind. I feel like a Disney princess because this is just magical. The situation is magical. It's praying, begging for me to jam. I act like I'm thinking. In my mind, I'm saying, okay, it's been like 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds. Yeah, I'm all in. <laughs> the big blind goes into the tank. He looks flabbergasted. He's like, the big blind ends up making the call. I show my hand and he mucks queen eight offsuit. Cooler again. It's an easy game when you have the nuts. And I am a male. I have two of them. Today, we had like eight. It's a great time. Hey, in the game for 1,000, out for 3260, over six and a half hours. That's a profit of 2.2 something something. So we win money again. Still a rare occurrence, but hey, we'll take it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.